Return of the Man from Uncle, Robert Vaughan and David McCullough are tackling their old enemies thrush once again with all the style and humour you remember from before. Unless I come up with $350 million within 42 hours, Seferin will detonate it. Hey, cover! This is one sequel that beats the original. Don't miss it. how long the term Man from Uncle was. It's, it must be for, um, almost 40 years now, isn't it, I, I think? Um, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And uh, that was, um, that was a, a labour of love. And uh, <clears throat> I was very uh, happy to make that work out. Mm. And um, uh, yeah, it was, you know, it, it, was, it was a great, it was a great experience mm. uh, doing the three um, Bionic movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, again, he did those with Ray, I think, or at least one of them with, with, with Ray. Is that right? He did um, the Bionic films? Yeah, I, I think, he, I think he, he did one of them. Hmm. Yeah. Because there had been obviously quite a few attempts to revive The Man from Uncle over the years. Um, right. How was it that you were able to succeed where others had, had failed? You know, I don't really remember, except, uh, you know, I, I just try to keep, yeah, put, it, put it together. And, uh, you know, the first thing I had to do was get uh, Robert Bowman involved. Mm. And, and, and then uh, he, he was easy. Um, David was, you know, not quite so easy, but... Uh, but he was fine too, and so it's one that when I uh, when I got them on board, then I you know then I uh, approached uh, CBS, uh, you know, and you know, and wrote the script, hmm. and uh, which they really liked, yeah. And so that's you know that that was you know that's the way it, this, it worked out. Hmm. Was CBS interested in it as a, a backdoor pilot or always as a one-off? Yeah, one-off. As a one-off. Right, right. Right, you know, I think they just, uh, and I think uh, David and, and uh, Bob was, you know, they, they were on board and they were, they, they were you know, enthusiastic, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, it, it wasn't going to go anywhere from there, no. Yeah, because I don't think they wanted to do a, a long series uh, uh, again, like, you know, because obviously they were in their, you know, much older and 26 episodes a year, whatever it would have been, would have been a bit too much. Um, I think so. Yeah. But they could have never have gone to, like, more TV movies or things like that. I, I it, it, it just, it didn't work out that way, you know. Uh, mm. You know, Bob got involved in a lot of stuff. And Dave is, you know... Uh, he signed on for NCAS, so um, you know he, he's been he's been doing, doing that for twenty years. Well, he, he had done more of that than he did Mouth Uncle, so it's been hugely um, successful, hasn't it? Really, for him. Oh yeah, oh for sure. Um, I, I'm curious, Michael. Did you ever see the recent Mouth Uncle film, and what did you think of it? If you did, no, I, I no, I. I had terrible reports of it, and um, uh, I didn't bother because it, it was. It was. I was told it was terrible. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it, it's it's not really the man from Uncle. Um, it's in itself. It's a good movie, I think, and it's quite. It's got good comedy, perhaps more of what you would have 
expecting a third season month monkey episode um but it's not really much to do with the original series it's kind of like a okay in itself but as a month monkey you think is is it is it really that part of the world um well i i mean i never saw saw it because uh and I, it was put off, so um, and, it's, and it didn't do it well. So um, no, no, it didn't. Um, I, I, I don't know if you, you obviously don't, might not know. Then um, in there's one, there's a scene in the new in the in the film where Elia is um, uh, he's got a they've got a, um, uh, a civilian, so very much like in Mount Monk or bringing a civilian into the spy world, and he's. Um, uh, they're in a, um, a a dress shop, and he is suggesting fashion bits and pieces for her. And I'm pretty sure that is a little homage to you making Elia a fashion designer in the Return Man from Uncle. So there is a link to your work in the new film, which I thought. Oh, really? I, I, I didn't know that. So I thought that was rather sweet that they put that in that that, that reference to what he would become. Uh, at yeah. The end. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know that. Hmm. So, um, I, I mean, did, did you? Was there particular reasons why you made Elia a fashion designer and uh, Napoleon a, a computer guy? Or was it kind of just sort of? It was kind of um, when I talked to them or uh, to David, really. It, I wanted I wanted to flip, flip it so that you know, so so. So it uh, uh, turned to being a uh, designer, and uh, uh, so it, 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 I just reversed it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it works really well for, for the for the for two characters actually, and and it, and it's lovely to have your your movie fill in those gaps that we you know always didn't see in the sixties and seventies of what they were doing in between. So right. Right. It, it serves as a lovely bookend to, um, you know, a, a, a fantastic show. So I think as, as fans, we're very grateful that you that, that you got the movie together and it was so good. Uh, well, it was uh, it was uh, fun, and uh, and uh, as I say, once once I got uh, the script done, you know, and there's just you know, a lot of back and forth with Universal. And you know notes and whatever, uh, but in the in, but in the end, you know uh, they finally gave it a, a green light. You know, mm. and I assume you watched the original series probably from from episode one. Or you you watched it back in the, in the in the mid sixties. What's that? Oh, you, you, I take you watched the series from the very beginning, and that's where you're you know. You began a fan from an early point, and the- oh yeah, no, no, I, I know, I love the show, uh, you know, but uh, but you know, everybody had moved on at that point, so mm. I just wanted to do a new Uncle movie, mm. and uh, I think I didn't tell um, Universal or CBS what I was doing. I was just I just wrote it. Mm. And sent it in, and uh, <laughs> but they, you know, but they, you know, they, they said, well, you know, we, we, this is good, but uh, you know, you know, change this, change that, and all that. But in, in the end, um, you know, they, it all came out mm. uh, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, it's a wonderful, um, a wonderful movie, and uh, and it, it, I, I do feel a bit sad watching it sometimes because I. I want. I want more. I want to see what they did afterwards. So, that's, I think it's very successful in reuniting, re- reigniting that magic that they had in in the sixties. It's, it's a very affectionate script, and it's. I, I think it's a beautiful bit of bit of work, Michael. So. Um, oh, thanks. No, it was it was fun, and uh, you know, uh, I remember this. There was a scene, the first scene I think between uh, Solo and Ilya. Mm. Uh, where they're um, out in the streets, and uh, uh, it's Ray, um, you know, orchestrated, and 
it was it was it was you know it, it, it took a like you know two three four minute scene mm. to you know re reintroduce them, but um, but it worked out very well. Tonight on the CBS Tuesday Night Movies, a desperate escape, the world held for ransom. Thrush's evil genius at large again, and only one man knows him well enough to stop him. I, Penn, hasn't talked to me in some time. Napoleon Solo. We need you. Desperately. I need Ilya Kiryat. Those men from Uncle are back, out of retirement and into the action, while the fate of humanity hangs in the balance. How many times did we say that? Constantly, as I recall. Robert Vaughn and David McCallum, the return of the man from Uncle. This all seemed a lot easier 15 years ago. Because it's... it's... It's obviously something. It's obviously a, a project very close to your your heart, isn't it? The um... oh no, for sure. You know, I, I I spent a lot of time um, on Uncle, and um, you know I wrote a book uh, uh, for their autobiography, mm -hmm. and um, I, I I think there's are three or four uh, chapters in, in the book, mm -hmm. and uh, it's um, you know and, and you know I mean Ray is you know, one of my closest friends. And has been for years. And uh, he, yeah, he's a great guy. Oh, he, he is. I, I've um, done a few of these events uh, for um, Avengers episodes because obviously he did a lot of uh, of the Avengers, and he's been incredibly generous and and you know giving us his time to to, to do these things with me. So uh, yeah, he's one of my favorite people in the um, in the entertainment business. So he's he's a wonderful man. And he's and he's really he's doing great, you know. He's always, he's always talking to me about, you know, oh, I'm getting on now, but you know, you would never knew it. Hmm. You know, he he looks, uh, you know, he looks great, and you know, in I think he's in good health, and uh, yes, he's yes, first as far as I know, and um, so he's a you know he, he's a really he's. He's a really good guy. Oh yeah, I mean he's he's eighty nine and um, he, you know, he's, he's full of energy, full of life, and um, you know, it's a. I didn't know he was quite that old. So he'll be uh, ninety uh, next year. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, well, you, you know, you would never know it. Oh no, no, no! I think you know, I I won't be half as. Uh, as good as well, I'll probably be dead by the, by the time I hit eighty nine. But um, <laughs> has good genes, shall we say? But, um, yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, so anyway, um, you know, Ray is uh, you know a very close friend of mine, and you know, we we keep in touch, and uh, uh, he's just a, a great guy.